Yeah. Born and raised in Florida. <laughs> Born oh, and raised. Are you also in Tampa, Siggy? Oh, I'm in Fort Myers right now. Fort oh, Myers, Florida? Me. I've been to Fort, Fort Myers. I love it down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful. I love it. All of Florida is beautiful. It's what? like every single piece is different, but it's all just a paradise. Yeah, and then you got Alligator Alley, right? Which goes from like where you live all the way to Miami, right? So yeah, the nice drive. You get to think on that ride. You get to, you know, just put your thoughts together. And if not, you know, me and Angel, we're always working. We're making our calls on that two-hour ride too. Thanks. We are live, guys. I'm so excited. All righty, guys. We're already discussing jumping into it. We can't even wait. Listen, let, let's go. My energy is high. I'm like, okay. I see the Patriots in the background. I do got a question about that afterwards, but we're going to ask because I need to know what you're feeling about this thing. But before we even do that, All right. listen, guys, listen, listen, listen. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped up because tonight is a special guest. So we can call it a special guest, okay? The man, the myth, the legend, bosses are in the house, okay? From Gemma 94.5 to, 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 to real estate. Zaji, what is the theme tonight? I just, oh what's the theme gosh. tonight? What's the topic tonight? All Tell right. Me. So, Balthazar, I hope you're ready. Today, I have my Savage shirt on because we're going, we're going full throttle. So, I the love- theme tonight, guys, is going to be on Night Owl Talk at 10 p.m. on Thursdays. Today's theme is going to be transition. Transition transition and some people are like transition that's not really a theme but you got you have to think about the big picture you have to think outside the box so Balthazar I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask before we get into the topic of the day um you know Angel's talked to me very highly about you um about your your career switch and that's a little bit of the reason why we chose transition as the topic But I want to get to know a little bit more about you and your story. Uh, Usually, as we have our guest hosts on here, we want to know a little bit of, you know, where you come from, your roots are, and your steps or your transition to get to where you are now. So if you can just give me like a brief synopsis to get to know you a little better. (laughs) Yeah, well, I had a very... um... I was very fortunate to have a great radio career and it all started in California. I was actually brought into the United States when I was three uh, years old. My parents brought me in, we were immigrants. I had a green card and I uh, kind of fell into radio right in high school. I wanted to be a sports announcer and kind of like fell into the music side of it. And right out of high school, I had my first radio job and I just kept on getting a bigger offers and offers. And finally I ended up in New York doing nights and somebody from Boston heard me and they were going to put this together, this radio station called Jamming 94.5, and they wanted me to do the morning show. And long story short, I've had a great career in Boston from 95 to 2001 at Jamming 94.5, and then they brought me back in um, 2013 to Hot 96.9. So it's been a blessing to be, uh, you know, California kid in, in Boston. People might think that's kind of like unlikely because of the weather, but the, uh, <laughs> the charm and the character of this, of this place is... Uh, you know, I was addicted to it and I always wanted to get back. So I'm lucky to be back. And then when my radio thing kind of fell through in 2015, I was like, all the kids that grew up listening to me uh, are now getting married. So I started a DJ business and then that was going strong. It's been going great for like the eight years, nine years. And then um, when COVID hit, I kind of like always had uh, a passion for real estate because I've been moving around the country and looking at homes and kind of got the jargon. And I'm a people person, so I thought this would be a great way to still uh, do my thing with, with what I'm good at, with people and entertaining, and then show them some homes to make them happy. So it's kind of like, you know, a little potpourri of everything in my life. But again, it all goes back <laughs> to helping people out and making people happy. Exactly, exactly. And you know, when you do something where you can put a smile on somebody's face or just make them feel better about their day or even like on their special day, you're over here, you were DJing and, you know, just making the moment happen and bringing that happiness and that joy in the moment on their special day. So that's huge. Yeah. And you know what's, what's crazy? You moving around, you know, I would say God has a purpose for everything. Mm-hmm. Who would have known that you would have been from radio show host to a realtor? 
You know what I mean? Like you moved around for a reason. You said you got the jargon and you started learning little by little. You didn't even know it. <laughs> you know what? Everybody we run into, including tonight, you guys are new and, and friends of mine now. Uh, everything we, we, we do in a day-to-day -day basis, we, we absorb, right? And then you might go back and, you know, down the you know, a few days down the road, a year down the road and go, you know what? I really like what they were doing on that podcast. I want to do one too. So everything you do, you, you, you choose and you pick what you want to absorb and use and mm -hmm. maybe in repertoire. And you know, like I said, it all goes back to making people happy. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, that's like a, a tick, a, 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 um, you know, a tit for tat. I give and I get back. So yeah. And I think that's the key to life, really, you know, make other people happy and it will be brought back to you probably tenfold. You know, it's going to be when you give, you get, basically. That is, yes, that. that is completely true. And I mean, Angel, we were talking about your food drive. Give me a I mean, I talk a little bit. I don't know, Balthasar, if you know about the food drive that Angel okay. that started. Okay. So we started a food drive. Really, it's, it's so crazy how God works. So it really started with me and a desire to give back. And then me and my friend, my sister, my business partner, um, it was like two years ago and it was supposed to be like a big, huge team thing, right? On Christmas, 2018. So I was still at my job back then, Zaji at UMA. And um, they were like, oh, we're going to give back on Christmas or whatever. So it was going to be a lot of us. And we're like, okay, great. Then I guess they couldn't do it. They couldn't, um, for whatever reason, they couldn't give. So it was me and my friend, my good sister, boss lady. She was on the show last week, Courtney Israel. So we were like, you know what? I remember walking in the hallway. I'm like, I don't know why they're not going to do it. But guess what, Courtney? We're going to go. We're going to do it. We're going to make the lunches. We're going to make this thing happen. So we got our stuff together. You know, I got the bread. She got the cheese. We got the ham. We made lunch bags. We started off with like 20, 25 lunch bags. And we just drove me and my, my blue car. I drive a stick still. I love my stick. <laughs> I was just, you know, doing my thing, backing up. Courtney's like, what are you doing? There goes a homeless person. There goes a needy person. Goes, and it just started from there, just the two of us, 20 lunches. Then we used to do it month to month. We said, we're going to try to do this month to month, and we're going to make it bigger and bigger each time, right? 20 lunches, 50 lunches, 100 lunches, 120 lunches. This past January, we gave out over 200 lunches. It's That's crazy. Great. So That's the goal great. is really to go from start in Florida, but then we're going to go to Mass. We're going to go to California. We're going to go everywhere. A thousand lunches. We're going to be doing another food drive February 28th, and we're going to be giving out care packages and food. So it's just getting bigger and bigger, just that transition from like small to little. And so actually we we need to give the, the definition our definition of transition right so we started off a little and then we started to slowly transition to big right so zaji well actually i wrote i wrote this one down the merriam webster definition of transition is a movement a development or evolution from one form stage or style to another so bosses are yep for you what would you say what is your definition of transition like what does that mean for you what does that mean to you you know, I try to um, incorporate this uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I think there's a lot of people in the world who get overwhelmed because they start overthinking the future and they start going, what if? And that could really scare anybody, even the most composed person, if you start thinking about the what ifs. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do is just go with the flow. Whatever I run into, uh, suppose the computer runs out right now, my battery's right now, I just go with the flow and make a transition you know, that's kind of my, my whole motto because um, from doing events and doing from the, and doing radio and even now with real estate, and you'll find it in your own life too. Uh, all those good plans don't come into fruition. They always kind of like flip the script on you and things have <laughs> changed, you know, uh, and you just have to be able to go with the flow. And if you're able to do that with life in general, I think you'll be happier. And, um, it's just something that you just go through time and life uh, experiencing and, you know, kind of like, okay, I'm not going to be dead set on this happening because it might go wrong or something, you know, it, the, the things might s switch, you know, the weather tomorrow, mm -hmm. we have a wedding yeah. somewhere, the weather's going to make it really challenging. I just have to figure out how to go with the flow with a lot of things in life, you know, that way we can write out the negative and bounce back quicker. I love you. Absolutely. And just being able to have that transition and, and that, ad, oh, okay, my Spanish is kicking here. Adaptation or adaptation? How do you say it? Adaptation. In Espanol? Adaptation. 
I, I, I you can adaptar, okay? We're doing bilingual today. Adaptar. You have adaptar. to adapt adaptar. to whatever comes adaptar. your way. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The pivot, right? So, so that's something that is super, super, super important. And you're right, while those are plans will always change. As long as you're focused on, you know, what you need to do and what your goals, you know, if you're going to go DJ at an event and it's super windy, you're going to make it go with the flow. You're going to make it go with the music. You have to just make it happen. And transitioning from one thing to another sometimes is not, it's not easy, but it is possible. Yeah. Is possible. You know, if you watch like a football game, just to make it, because here we are with the big game uh, this weekend, um, yeah. sometimes the, the plan of attack that you had is not working against the defense and all of a sudden you have to flip the script. So I think that's a, a good um you know, uh, an analogy of how, how you should do with life. Sometimes what you had planned, scripted, is mm -hmm. not going to be working today. So now you have to go into your other personality or you get to, you know, pull a little harder on some people to get them to grind, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is, yeah. just adapt to it and make that, like you said, that word transition, just transition minute by minute and hopefully it gets back to smooth air. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Like, am I always like to say, say either you find a way or you make one? And I love that saying. I, I, and mm -hmm. I, I went to that school mm -hmm. like many, many, it seemed like many, many years ago, like eight years ago. Yeah. Find a way you make it happen. So, so yeah. Zachary. One of the uh, quotes that uh, somebody, you know, when I was on Jam 94.5, we were uh, beating everybody. We we're like top, top morning show. And I thought, man, this is, I remember that. This, is it. this is what you dream of. You're going to be, uh, be here for another 10, 15 years, just like Maddie is. We're going to be that iconic morning show that people who um, listen to us are going to grow with, grow with us. And it didn't happen like that. My contract ran out and they didn't, they uh, decided to send me to New York. And uh, I went to New York and I said, man, I never thought I'd be back here in New York. I thought my plan was to be in Boston. And this smart guy, he's real, really bright. He goes, you know, the old saying, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And, and, and it's true. Uh, the plans that you have are not the ones that God has for you. It's so, so it's still true. I mean, you just, you know, you sketch them out, you, you write them down in pencil form, but don't put them in ink because I don't think they're going to be uh, concrete. They could change. And that's what life does to you, right? It's so yeah, it's crazy. You know, I remember when I was 18 years old, not even seven, 16, probably, you know, I was an honor student. Last year? Student, I said, <laughs> last year, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look like we're still, uh, you know, high you school. You guys look young, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, man. So I thought that, you know, I was going to be, I was in the marching band. I was going to be the lady up there with the baton, directing the whole band. I had it all planned out. Man, senior year comes, I switched to a different school. I didn't even want to do band at that school. It was crazy. I thought I was going into TV production for a couple of years. I went to college. I started studying that. And so as I learned, my plans would change, change, change. Now I'm in finance. Who would have known? But I'm still using my marketing skills, still using those radio TV production skills to be able to bring something to others. And so, you know, that's the reason why we started this show. It kind of just came out, you know, it was set in my heart. Angel was like, mm, I'm thinking of doing this too. What do you think, Saji? And it just happened. And, you know, it's, it's just so exciting, that transition. And even yeah. though it's not your plan, it's always God's plan for you. Oh, you just didn't know it yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, you don't know what the next steps are going to be. Exactly. You just got to move forward and keep moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely true. So I, I do have a fun question. Okay, so you kind of answered the other one already. So I'm going to jump into the second one. So we know, okay, this is kind of a question for me, from me to you. Okay, so we know nowadays we do a lot of networking through social media, Facebook, LinkedIn. I mean, there's, there's unlimited things right now. Mm -hmm. Instagram, there's so many different new social medias that are coming up that we didn't think about two, three years ago. So for the entrepreneurs and the business owners that are starting their businesses now and adapting and in a transition um, that now we can't really meet in person, I was just wondering, you know, back in the day, you know, not too back there, but, you know, maybe a couple <laughs> days ago, <laughs> what were your, your, your strategies for, for connecting and networking with other professionals and individuals in the industry and even now as a realtor, even though we're doing social media, but what are your strategies and some tips you can give to those that want to network and 
go ahead and just open up their horizons. Yeah, I think, uh, well, now we have social media, so everybody could be courageous online and type things out and make it perfect and, you know, uh, write up our little uh, posts. But uh, I've always thought that uh, connecting with people and making eye contact was the ultimate gift because you leave an impression. So I was a guy on the radio, and but I could be like playing golf or I could be at the supermarket and nobody really knows. And uh, I just make an impression. A smile goes a long way and people remember that. And I think the smile opens it up to a hello, to hey, well, how's your day going? And all of a sudden, you, you know, you just start this uh, chain link effect where you keep on meeting people, 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 and you get into different networks. You know, um, my always, I, I think, I hate to say it, but my, my gift of gab, I could be sitting next to a complete stranger and making small talk about anything. Just finding that common bond with anybody is the key to uh, projecting yourself and also uh, making um, an impression on someone. So, hey, that guy was cool. I wonder what he does. What do you do, B? And I go, I do real estate now at the market, it's, you know, things like that, you know. Um, I have a, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fearless like that. I, I'm not afraid of talking to anybody or about anything. So I think that's just something that um, it's God given. Other people are shy. And to those people, I always give the advice, you know, uh, to do something that you're uncomfortable doing. And that's the only way you can grow out of that shell. Just keep on doing something you're uncomfortable doing. It's not going to feel great. It's kind of like going to the gym. It doesn't feel good lifting weights, but at the end you get bigger or, you know, you grow. Right. So I think mm -hmm. that's what you have to do on a daily basis. Do something that makes you so uncomfortable, but you'll grow from it. I love that. I, love I absolutely that. love that. Because even like, so in our industry, we're in network marketing, right? We're in network right. marketing and we're, we're in credit and we're in finances. And so it's like, for me, one of my things is I love the fact that you say being uncomfortable because I'm thinking about like, we had to do a challenge where it's like, uh, you know, talking, just talking to random people. And I'm not gonna like, sometimes I'm shy. And like, even for me, Zaji and I have had conversations where I speak Spanish as well, but I don't, I'm not a native speaker. So it's like, Angel, just get out of your shell. Go ahead and just talk to the person. Even if you, with your chopped up Spanish, just do it. You've been studying it for a long time. So I love the fact that you say that. Just go ahead, make yourself uncomfortable. Continue to keep doing it because eventually the things that you're doing that are uncomfortable, they become comfortable to you when you start mm -hmm. to get used to it and you start to, um, just like you said, just grow fearless, grow the balls to go out and just do <laughs> it. And then eventually it's like, you don't even it doesn't even matter anymore. Just that repetition and just practicing. So I love the fact that you said that. And I'm like, okay, I got to take that heart and just keep running with it. You know, it's a process uh, for some, for some, they just like you just, just fearless like that already. But um, it's awesome. He's making it happen. And I love that. We're gonna, now that, that, that motivates me. That really motivates me. <laughs> yeah, just jump in the pool, you know, you'll figure out how to swim. Um, yeah. It's something that I think we conquer every day we face a fear. You know, if it's not um, public speaking, it could be dealing with the weakness that you have uh, when you meet people, you're nervous, you're shy, whatever. So it's something that over time, if you keep on conquering it, conquering it, you'll make strides and I think everything's about confidence. So the more you do something, the more confidence and the more you'll feel comfortable. And then you, if you conquer your fear, I think that's the biggest growth you could, you could say to yourself and say, wow, that was very difficult and I pulled yeah. it off. I could do the next miracle, you know, what, what, what else do I need to do? Repetition makes confidence. So absolutely. So that I, I remember going to elementary school with you, right? Uh, excuse me, when I was in elementary, I remember just listening to you on the, on the radio, listening to you and just admiring like the energy and everything that you offer you and Pebbles. I remember that I, I, I love the radio show. Um, so explain to us the transition that occurred within you to take you from being on the radio to then going into real estate. Because like you said, you know, you, you use a gift of connecting with people in real estate, um, the same that you use with, with net, with um, being on the radio. But was there a, a, another kind of transition that kind of occurred within you um, being that, you know, you were, you were wild on, on Gem 94.5. Like, <laughs> I don't know, Zaji. If you ever heard one of his shows at all, but like back in the day, I remember Balthazar and Pebbles, they were wild, okay? So I want to know what <laughs> the, <laughs> the transition, if there was an internal transition that occurred inside of you to go from, you know, radio DJ to real estate agent. 
Well, radio really kind of closed the door. You know, uh, it's really shrinking now. Everything's recorded, and it's just a, um, not the way the the landscape of radio has completely changed. So the like I said, I, I, I've always been a people person. So always been whether I'm on the radio or in person, I'm going to be very uh, friendly. And I think the occupation of um, the realtor is very similar. I think if you're a people person, you will you will make friends. Uh, and that personality aspect helps you uh, finding people homes and things like that. You know, my weaknesses would probably be the due diligence, the paperwork, that sort of thing. <laughs> Admin. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, but, 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 but you know what the thing is, is that I read this thing on uh, in men's health. There was a guy who gives advice. It was called Jimmy. Jimmy, the bartender was an advice column. And this guy wrote in and said, Jimmy, I can't believe it. The guy who's a hot mess, he's got paperwork all over the place. He just uh, got the executive position over me and I'm always on top of everything. And Jimmy said, the people who are talented are the ones who end up to be CEOs and all this stuff. Cause guess what? They are draw, you know, our personalities, that sort of thing. Charisma. The charisma. It doesn't go hand in hand with being organized. If you're organized, you're probably going to be uptight, which is not going to make you good with people, right? So I, I I learned that you have to be yourself and learn how to deal with the the, the weaknesses of the things you're not great at, but know mm -hmm. that you are who you are for a reason, and those things that make you who you are are your strength, and never try to change for anybody because that's that wouldn't be be right. So, you know, mm -hmm. and in radio, what happens is. Um, they have like a consultant and they Pebbles and I went to the, the longest time trying to figure out why we we're so different. You know, uh, Pebbles probably, I drove her crazy because I was always uh, coming in with ideas and, and, and we got to do this. And it was crazy ideas. And she was more like analytical and um, precise. She wanted to dot the I's, cross the T's before we reported that Kim and Kanye broke up. She was like, I got to find out if it's true. And my thing is like, let's just roll with it and go with the flow. You know, we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> and that. That, that created a clash. Mm -hmm. But somebody finally came and worked with us, a consultant, and said, you know what? You, you have to respect Pebbles because that's, she does things that you're not good at. And you do things that she's not good at. And together, you'll, you'll, for, you'll form that, you know, the, the jigsaw, the, the yin for yang. And I think in, in life, that's sometimes that we, we overlook at other people because, um, Man, what's wrong with her? You know, but if you if you look at it, the big picture, you could you could really team up with somebody whose strengths are opposite of yours. So yeah, that was something I really learned about. You know that um, we are who we are, and you can't change people no matter what. You know, in relationships, way or whatever kind of relationship, the husband, the boyfriend, if he's messy and you met him when he was messy, he's going to be messy fifteen years down the road. Is this a, a personality mm -hmm. trait? Facts, you right? know, and uh, you have to just deal with it and um, work around it. Uh, but you know, it doesn't mean that it's not going to drive you crazy. It's just going to be a little more, you know, more patience. <laughs> and, uh, and then ultimately, you decide if you want to live with that or not. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, we have the decision to make ourselves happy. If someone's doing something that affects your happiness because of a habit or a bad personality trait, you don't have to be in it. So that's very true. It's all part of transition. Sometimes. You just need to recognize when you need to cut that loose and move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have to know about yourself. You know, like the the person I, I see some of my friends and I'm like, man, this guy's always on. And I'm thinking, I can't be, I, you know, I don't want to be too much Baltazar, like on top of you with all this personality, because I think that drives people crazy too. Mm -hmm. So everything in moderation, you know, uh, sometimes you know when to turn it on and sometimes it's like, just chill, just, you don't have to be on all the time, you know, kind yeah, of pace yourself. Mm -hmm. balance super true it's all about balance and you know as you hit those transition periods you realize okay i need to work on this or you know what i'm i know that i'm not good at this and i'm pretty much never going to be good at it i can find ways to adapt and to get better so i can you know complement and strengthen my other skills and gifts that i have but certain things you know like me my time management is terrible Bob, you know, i'm gonna just be honest <laughs> i am so late. creative huh no, I see you're late for the show already. I know your time management sucks. Oh my God. <laughs> no. So for me, I'm like, you know what? You know, I need to be on the schedule. I have to make sure this and this and this is done. And I'm like, being a perfectionist, trying to overachieve, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's. 
I'm more of a creative type and you know yeah. I can be do admin like Angel says up to a certain point but I just have to realize like right. I'm more of a you know what it's a transition period I'm just gonna go with it so I completely understand and you know it's it takes strength to go ahead and realize hey this is a certain skill that I'm not good at but you know what I have these strengths so let me work on these strengths and I can compensate for everything else and delegate the rest right <laughs> the stuff that you're not good at you find someone else who can like like you and uh pebbles the things that you're not good at she got you you got her that's a compliment so the things that you're mm -hmm. not good at the things that i'm not good at we 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 we, we take the strengths and we strengthen those and then we go ahead and we delegate the things that we were not good at like i'll be talking to people all the time like listen what do we talk, talk about zaji I'm not really the domesticated type. I'm so serious. I can't wait. Once we start getting like wealthy, we're going to hire somebody. Come cook for me, please. Come do these dishes. Come do all this grocery shopping. Let me go and do what I want to do. Because the rest of it, I'm not really sure. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know how they say opposite attract? I think mm -hmm. sometimes we find you admire somebody because, oh, God, they really have their stuff together. You know, they're so composed and you're like the opposite. So I think we're drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to figure out if, you, if that works for you, because I think you could drive each other crazy because you're being opposites too. But um, it's just something in the life that um, just from having kids and everything, you kind of see who they click with and who they don't click with. Mm -hmm. And it's just like what, we, what we've already gone through, you know, figuring out what works for us as friends, relationships, work, you know, that yeah. fits our personalities, right? So absolutely and you know speaking on that so being a professional being a family man at the same time i know you have two beautiful daughters correct i have uh, actually four, four kids i have that i know of i have uh, two uh from a previous marriage that they're like in college uh high school late high school age and then um mm -hmm. my two little ones for my current marriage um <laughs> uh yeah seven and nine right now so Oh, one just had a birthday. Why was it Brooke? You know, yeah, I, was doing my, I was doing my stalking thing. I told Zaji, I'm going to do my stalking yeah, thing. I mean, looking up on social media. <laughs> yeah, Brooke, Brooke is great. She's got the personality and uh, loves drama and things like that. So I think we definitely get that from uh, her parents. Uh, my wife's very, uh, uh, also, uh, again, I went to college for drama and things like that. She's want to be in Ooh. broadcasting herself. Uh, so, you know, she's got a personality. I got a personality. And then hopefully it you know, blends into our kids, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about, you know, from the perspective of being a professional. Now you've gone from being um on the radio, working for, you know, a corporation company, to now you're in real estate, which is more of doing your own thing on your own. It's like your own venture. So can you tell me a little bit about the transition and how you've adapted with your family, with your family time, going from one um to going to now you have to be your own boss and now you have a little bit more time with family, I suppose. So tell me a little bit more about that and maybe a couple things that you do to go ahead and balance being an entrepreneur, a business owner, mm -hmm. to spending time with your family as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a work in progress as far as the entrepreneur, but I always, uh, you know, from growing up poor, I always thought that wh whatever you put into it, you'll get out of. So. I always figured the, the, the longer time I spent at the radio station or on my show, the more I get successful with. Same thing with uh, my business of DJing and also with my real estate, the more time I put into it, you know, um, making phone calls, reaching out to people, the more I'm gonna get out of it. So I've just been kind of like a motto, you know, it's just been the work ethic has to be there because mm -hmm. stuff doesn't happen by itself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one thing that motivated me when I was a kid, uh, we were poor. Uh, you know, you guys were great uh, talking about charity and things like that. That's how actually we survived growing up. We would get like donations and of clothes and ended up, um, you know, helping us through this. We were just kids. We didn't know what we thought that was just a way of life. But mm -hmm. when you grow up a little by little, you're, as you're, you go to school and you see kids with Nikes and you're wearing like crap shoes you're like, I want, I want, I want some of that. You know, I want to, mm -hmm. I got a little greedy. I wanted to get a, a little more ambitious. And I, I, I just said, I don't, don't want to be poor. And that kind of drove me in the early years, you know, mm -hmm. just wanting to get out of poor, of being poor and being able to be um, independent 
where my parents were poor and we had to probably rely on welfare and stamps and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that, but I, I always thought that that was my, my uh, one thing that I wanted was to get out of it and not, and not become comfortable in that setting. So I just got lucky, you know, uh, God had a plan for me and everything mm -hmm. that I, that's happened to me has been out of luck. And I think work and uh, work ethic creates luck. You know, you put, it puts, it puts yourself in, in good situations to, to make something happen and take advantage of. Absolutely. Faith without works, yeah. Faith without yeah. works is dead, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really encourage people to be more, you know, uh, a bigger heart is bigger, is better than um, bigger talent. I always thought that the, the people in, in the sports and the overachievers, exactly, they're just overachieving. They had, didn't have much, but they tried so hard, they overcame so many negatives, you know. We could all say that, um, you know, growing up sometimes and even in adulthood, um, maybe I didn't get a job because I was, you know, oh this Mexican kid can't do that you know and I just had to try harder to overcome that stereotype mm -hmm. you know they, they would put me in a category of uh, one, one guy hired me and he said I think you're the best uh, Latin jock in America and I told him I said yo I said this is great best Latin jock but I want to be the best jock at, period. period don't don't period. Like that. Mm -hmm. oh, oh you're right so I, you know that is I don't think the person was mean-spirited it was just ignorance you know people grew up in mm -hmm. a different time right so Mm -hmm. I, I always thought that um, the being the best that I could would all automatically portray my my background, my Latin background, my Mexican background in a negative in a different light to people. You know, maybe I could change somebody's mind about the stereotype about of Latins. You know, oh, yeah. you know, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the other day, and it said it said you know when people underestimate you, sometimes you got to use that as like your strength. That could be the biggest strength when people underestimate you, you know, mm -hmm. like they look at you and they try to size you up and it's like, they're like, okay, I, I think that you're just going to be this, this little Mexican kid. And then it's like, you outwork them. And the reason why you're outworking them is because they think that they could just lay back and slack, but because they came down on you, it just pushes you harder. And I read that just the other day where it said like, when people underestimate you, we use that as a strength. And I believe that. I truly believe that each one of us, I'm pretty sure with us, all three of us being minorities have had that happen where it's like mm -hmm. people look at you, they size you up and then you go. And next thing they're like, oh shit, I didn't, oh, excuse me. I didn't think that, it, I didn't think that they were going to, I didn't think that they were going to do that. Yeah. But well, you know, I think, uh, I think get motivated by the haters. I think people who are successful <laughs> wake up with the enemy in, in the mirror and go, I'm going to kick his ass today. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin that person's day. They think I can't mm -hmm. do this. I'm going to show them I can do it. You know, so you, you find little strengths like that. You know, I think uh, for example, Tom Brady, he was uh, pissed because he was the last guy drafted and that's always been a chip on his shoulder. Whatever you can find to motivate you for success, you know, and to keep going. I think that's what you have to, when you feel the lowest, you think about, I can't let them win and that will get you through the tough times. Oh. Exactly. And sometimes it's when they think these things of you and when they say these things of you or when they pick you last, it's like, you know what, that's what they think of me, but I'm not going to give them that power. I define right. who I am and I know what I bring to the table. So it's time for me to go ahead and put my work in go and make sure it. that I can show them and everybody else that I'm worthy. God gave me this skill. God blessed me with this for a reason so I can help other people. I'm not going to let him, just anybody overlook me. And if they overlook me, shame on them. Because right. guess what? If I, if God has a plan for me, this is just a transition. You overlook me and you look where I'm at now, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's a friend. You know, people who are we think are friends also may have a jealousy behind your back. And uh, it's just something that you have just got to work through and um, always be true to yourself. You know, know that you're the one that controls your own destiny. Amen. I love that. Absolutely. There's so many times where you, you come across people and you think that they're in your life permanently, but they only come for a season. How many times and have you had those experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. The last people on Tinder. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> only for a season, okay? <laughs> but definitely, you know, 
you will see people that will come into your life and they're put there for a purpose, not really just to Teach you put all of your trust in them and to invest in, in all, everything in them. And I like to think of it in circles. You have ring, you have your inner circle, that's, you know, higher value. Then you have your outer circle, you know, you kind of go out with them sometimes. You're really out of circle. You see them every couple of months and then you're super out of circle. They're just your Facebook friends. You're not really going to get close to them. But as you go along life, you have certain moments where people have an impact on you. Mm -hmm. And it depends on you what kind of impact you let them have in your life. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm very observant. Even though I'm, I like to talk, I, like, I love to observe. Because mm -hmm. when you listen to someone else's perspective, when you go ahead and let them speak, you can see what their intentions are. You can hear and you can see from their actions where their heart truly lies. And I've learned, especially in the financial industry, you can clearly tell when you're speaking to a client or you're speaking to someone else in the industry where their heart truly lies and their actions and their words and the way they express themselves, you can really see who they are in their true colors. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, especially during a transition that you keep your eyes open with that because you don't want to bring along those people that are haters those people that bring, you know, that they're just, they're just not going to bring positivity mm -hmm. to your life. You have to stay with those people that are positive, pushing you forward. I mean, Balthazar, this is our, our first time meeting. And look, already, we're talking about growth. We're talking about building others up. You know, this is a transition. Back. Who knows where things might go from here, you know? So it's just, you just have to keep going. It's a transition. Don't let those haters push you down. <laughs> That's it. That's right. <laughs> Love it. I don't even know. We 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 even got all like, the questions. I'm excited. I'm just listening. I'm observing. I'm so excited. Um, just like the nuggets and what you're pouring into us. Absolutely. It. Um, what what we have here? So you've had a lot of luck. Like you mentioned, you had a lot of a lot of great blessings and a lot of things that have happened from you. Just you know, you went came here um, from Mexico. And then you, you you said that you started off in New York, right? From New York, California, California and then New York, New York. That I just other bigger cities and ended up in New York, and then finally here in Boston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but what mistakes have taught you your biggest life lessons in general? What do you, what mistakes? Because I know even in my life, sometimes, like I'll give you an example. I failed the test. I wanted to be a Spanish teacher, right? And as you know, I wanted to be a Spanish teacher. I failed that that twist, that tight test two times, once in Mass and once in Florida. But I always wanted to educate. I always, always wanted to teach people, but I always wanted to use Spanish to do it. <clears throat> now, I could have taken that failure and been like, I'm done with Spanish, period. I'm done with educating, period. But that, those, those, those times is actually what kind of led me to where I'm at right now. So now it's like I have a bigger audience to educate. And I can do it in both languages. So for you, what mistakes or what past failures have actually helped you right now and have taught you your biggest life lessons? Yeah, the biggest one goes back to those days of jamming where, like I told you, we had just beat Maddie and we were running the, running things in Boston. And, um, you know, I was up for a contract. And, I, you know, just like any athlete, you hit all the home runs, you hit the all the touchdowns and you anticipate to get paid like that but in radio it's not like that so it was um a quick uh, gut check when they said we could live without you you know you know what we're, we're killing everybody you can't let no 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 we, we, uh we're not going to renew you but you're going to new york so all that feeling you know i was in my 20s right and um all that um bravado and all that like ego and uh fearless, you know, all these things that you, in your twenties, you're an egomaniac because you run things. Uh, it was just a, a great time in my life, but also it was a lot of being selfed up. So when that happened to me, I, you know, it knocked me off my pedestal and I had to re restart. And, and the next time when I reached the top or on my way to the top, I knew that it, 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 I couldn't take things for granted. And okay. even now, like, even when things are going great, just count your blessings and not be full of yourself, you know, to stay grounded. Cause I, I think looking back, I was like laughing at the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I don't want, they're not going to, there's no way they're going to say no to me. I'm yeah. Baltazar, you know, 
and it's and it's all that confidence from success and everything but ultimately you know you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself you know that old quote it's funny but um stay grounded and, and be nice to everybody. I, I thought I was being nice to everybody, but I think probably there was an air of arrogance that I had in my twenties and I needed to be checked back a little bit to, to, to make sure that I know that I, you know, things happen and uh, stay grounded all throughout the whole process. Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. you're not above Absolutely. anybody basically. Mm-hmm. I always say, you know, there's not going to day that's going to pass that I'm not going to learn something new. I learn every day till the day I die. And I a hundred, a thousand percent believe that. It's about being humble. Sometimes like I, <clears throat> pride really can lead to destruction, but sometimes um, we need to be humble and God needs to remove some things from us, take some things he needs to show, you know, make us naked so that we can go ahead and rebuild ourselves again. I really believe that. And yeah. then we come back better than what we were beforehand. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, I mean, I could, I could be, um, taking myself and saying, you know what, you were, you thought you were all that in a bag of chips. But I could also say that the way you handle um, the bad moments, the the losses is how you really grow and get character out of it, you know? Yeah. And a lot of it uh, to me was like, oh, it's going to be about the dollar sign, how much money I make to be successful. And, and now as you grow up, you kind of figure out that, you know what, I'm not making as much money as I was with jamming or back in the day when I was on top of everything in radio, but I'm more balanced and I have other successes. You know, when I was on the radio, uh, people did things for me. I had uh, things that were like brought to me, typed, you know, or, you know, just produced for me. Uh, once you get out of that element of being spoiled and having people do that, you have to do it yourself. That's when you grow. Like people are go, how did how, you learn? learn Photoshop. I thought you're not good with the electronics. I, I had to teach it myself, you know? Mm-hmm. So all that stuff that was done for me before, uh, now I had to do it myself. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, I thought that, that was my, my biggest, uh, like being proud of myself. I was like, yeah, how did I learn all this stuff? And now I had to run my own business and my own, uh, you know, real estate thing. So things like that happen for a reason where you, you, you know, you, you, instead of being spoiled, you're the ones getting, getting your hands dirty now. Absolutely. And, you know, I've learned that in my experiences as well, you know, just being in, I started off working at a sushi cafe. That was my first experience. Sushi but cafe. guess where I was? Nice. I was uh, right up front. So every single person that walked in, I had to talk to all of them. And that's what started with me talking to people. Actually, let me, let me throw it back. I used to do the morning announcements in the fifth grade. <laughs> and oh, the cool. teacher pushed me in the fifth grade the teacher would push me come on you can do it you're really good and I was like no I really don't want to do this can you just do it in the library okay so I did it you know so these experiences little did I know that now I'm talking to people every single day about something as precious about as their finances yeah. something that pe- many people don't like to discuss these things but I have the comfortability to be able to open up and just talk to them and make them feel confident like hey look you know my character is in place my morals and values are where they need to be and I'm doing this for a reason Mm -hmm. and so there's a transition different experience that we have through our life that we take into our present entrepreneurship our present businesses so what would you say are some skills other than I said you you learned photoshop What, what other skills did you learn that you took from radio to go ahead and bring into real estate I just communication and being, uh, you know, efficient, uh, especially in this life that we live in now, everything's instant and everybody has ADD. So you have to grab people's attention within like 10 seconds or else they'll, they'll check out, you know, and you have to grab them. And um, those, those traits from radio, you know, the headline is gotta be, you know, uh, captivating and luring mm-hmm. people in. And uh, I think that's how you, you have to project yourself. You, you've got to make a, an impression in, in less time now more than ever because people just check out. They've got so many things to do. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they, they could punch you out on the radio. They could punch you out mentally and just be here like a zombie looking at you. But they're like thinking about, you know, what they're doing after this date or whatever, or, or whatever meeting we have. So, you know, I think confidence is something that you have to have, but also you have to prepare. You can't take things for granted going into a meeting and just wing it, you know? 
Mm -hmm. uh, in radio, they always teach you when you open up a break, they always teach you the opening, the meat of the conversation, and then how to get out. So that's things that you kind of implement in real life now. It's kind of like, hey, I'm going to grab them. This is going to be my, my, my headline. This is going to be what I'm going to like, my goal to get across, and then leave them with an impression. And you know who does that best? I forgot what chain of um, hotels, but um, Apple does it too. When they when you go to the Apple store, the first thing they do is greet you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They make you feel important. When you're in there, they take care of you. But the most important thing they do is that when you leave, they give you a reason to come back or leave an impression with a smile or something and say thank you for coming in. You have to do these little steps to get people to come back to you. Mm -hmm. You just can't be... Uh, you know, do a fraction of those things. You have to uh, welcome them, do your job with them, do your, whatever you were hired for doing, and then give them a reason to come back or give them a reason to refer you. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, I think absolutely. it was Four Seasons who does that, and Apple does it too. It, I forgot what it's called, but if you Google it, you'll find it. It's just the uh, their game plan on how to handle people, and I think it, 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 it's uh, something we can do in day to day life, you know? Make somebody feel like the most important person and they'll remember that, you know? They don't care about what you know. They care about how you make them feel. And the it, really is, it really is about making people feel good. I really think that that's the key to, to life. If you make somebody feel good, you give off this vibe that I want to hang out with them again. You know, that's, it's something that's as simple to do, but it really is about the experience. Absolutely. I love that. And so you've gone from, from one thing to another and, th and that transition is just so beautiful because you've taken all of these experiences that you had, all these ups and all these downs and you've just combined them into, hey, you know what, this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna take all these lessons and I'm just gonna run with it. And that is so admirable. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. You guys are great to be hanging out with tonight too. Uh, you have a personality, no wonder they put you at the front of the sushi booth. You, you got the uh, the personality, girl. <laughs> yeah, my mama. Awesome. yeah, she is awesome. That bubbly personality. <laughs> Actually, man, I'm so excited. Um, we got next. So we gotta, we gotta ask our signature yeah, question. We, we gotta, gotta ask the signature. Well, I got, okay, I got one more I'm ask mine. She's going to ask hers. And then and I got another gonna, special go question okay. at the end. I got one more last question at the end. But the go ahead. question. What is it? Well, no, we're going to do that one last. Do that. Okay. Go ahead, Zaji. You do yours first. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay. I know okay. what the question is. Okay. All right. Be prepared, <laughs> Baltazar. Okay. So I love reading books. I don't know if you see my, my book collection over here. Right. I have a lot of books that I like to read. And I really, really believe in um, reading and getting all the knowledge that I can that way I can act on it because knowledge without power is, is nothing. So um, I like to learn from other people's experiences and I like to get into other people's brains by knowing what books they like to read. So my question for you is what are the one, two or three, you know, if you give me a couple books, I'll go on Amazon and buy all of them. What are your preferred books or what books have you read that have touched your, your, you know, your life that have touched you in the way of you learning for your business, your real estate, what books have impacted you the most? Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm not a big reader. Uh, I've been, uh, my books have been more sports oriented, you know, being a big Patriots fan. I read about how the uh, dynasty came to be and I'm kind of like driving those and, and that sports thing. I, I always thought that sports gives you a, um, a glimpse of life, you know, how to handle um, setbacks and how to move forward. Um, mm -hmm. I've never been into self-help uh, as far as books that, that work like that. Um, I just kind of like, not, not really a reader to tell you the truth. I, I like the cliff notes and the highlights. <laughs> I love it. Hey, there's audio books, you know, they, they, they are. Yeah, audio book. Mm -hmm. And yeah, actually, I'm there's a, a good answer for that one, but that's being truthful. I, I, I could, you know, fake the funk and give you a Zig Ziglar or, you mm -hmm. know. No, it's okay. We want the truth. Mm -hmm. I love it when you keep it 100 with yeah. me, okay? We want to just know. keep it 100. Yeah. I mean, keep it real, okay? So, you know, some, something like that's books, good so. is. I like cookbooks and recipes, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I like What's your favorite dish? Do you like to cook? What's your favorite dish? 
Yeah, you know what? What I liked it when I was growing up before I got into broadcasting, that was my my first uh, love and passion was cooking. And I wanted to be a, a chef or a hotel manager. Uh, I was going to plan on going to um, college for that. And then all of a sudden radio fell on my lap. So the uh, the cooks that I, I like, I mean, I'm, you know, I've been cooking enchiladas since I was 10, uh, <laughs> you know, Mex making Mexican food, but um, I'm into keto now. So I do a lot of recipes that are keto friendly with yeah. almond flour and uh, things that are uh, sugar substitute. So that's my latest passion right now is converting stuff that we love, like pizza into dough and using the keto products to make that happen. Yeah, that was good. I mean, what God works in mysterious ways, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm trying to lose some weight, so I might have to get some of your recipes. <laughs> yeah, keto works. You stay away from the carbs. And, and now with these days, they, um, I mean, everybody thought that Atkins back in the day was like the, the, the diet and you had to eat meat and eggs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now uh, they've done wonders with almond flour and you know, these other types of flowers like coconut, where you mm -hmm. can get the texture almost down the bread. You know, it's not going to be 100%. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great substitute, and you don't have to sacrifice loading up on carbs. You could, you know, and the body kind of like keto works by eating itself. So if it, it, it doesn't have carbs, it has to force itself to burn its own fat. Mm -hmm. That's how keto works. So. The body uh, thinks sugar is, uh, um, is it needs to be stored. And that's why when you eat sugar and carbs, which is sugar, uh, it stays in your body. And we get Gordo. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, and uh, we all love a good, you know, uh, bread and a good pie and a good, mm -hmm. you know, cake. My and Puerto Rican bread. My por I had it for dinner tonight. I'm not going to lie. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> but what, you know, I think food is one of those things that we find comfort in. And I just learned that we have to have a, we have to manage that relationship. We have to like <laughs> relationship management. Facts. It is. It's something that you know. You know, if you're if you know that you get drunk after three drinks, stop at two and a half. You mm -hmm. know, when you, if you know you're going to gain five pounds in the holidays, know how to you know eat every other day instead of every day. You know, mm -hmm. um, we we if you can control it and, and get control of that management of your relationship with food, it'll help you out. Man, these are these are golden nuggets he's dropping right here. Right. In order to be successful in business, take care of your body, okay? Yeah, yeah, your yeah. true wealth is in your health, right? It starts with your. It starts. Yeah, with your you know what? And another thing I discovered is uh, ninety percent or whatever percentage it is. I think most of it of losing weight is not going to the gym. I think that's great, but I think uh, most of it is what you put in into your, you know, into you that uh, could could uh, fluctuate your weight more than anything mm -hmm. else. That's so true. Absolutely. That's yeah. so true. Absolutely. So one of the things that we love about this show and the kind of, um, you know, the type of guest hosts that we truly like to invite to the show are really people who have had, um, you know, either relate, you know, either successful or relationship with God. So one of the second to last questions is, here we go. What is your favorite Bible character or your favorite Bible story? That's not my last question, but what's your favorite Bible character, your favorite Bible story, and why? There's a, there's a couple, you know, and it, it brought back my childhood when you asked that question ahead of time. Um, when I was a kid, I was very religious. My parents, we were poor, so the first thing uh, that they were um, uh, introduced to was the church because the church came and gave us food and clothes. So my mom felt obligated to go to church. Mm -hmm. So as kids, you know, you follow your parents, we're just going to go to church and you heard the great stories, right? You heard about David and Goliath, I thought that was a, you know, any, anything can happen. You know, you, you don't uh, ever like deny yourself or believe you can't do something because if he did it against the giant, he could do it. And uh, Joseph comes to mind, you know, that the, the brothers were jealous and he was put in the pit. You know, we talked and, about uh, that one last week. Uh, yeah, you read that? Yeah, I, I like that story a lot. But my name is Baltazar, so I have to be number one with the three kings, Baltazar and the kings and the baby Jesus, right? So that's yes. it. <laughs> and we looked it up. We were like, um, I think yeah. Baltazar is in the Bible. And, and she's like, yeah. oh, Google, uh, look up Baltazar. And it's like, I think it's part of the Tres Magos. I think it's, it's part of the Tres Magos. Yeah, my mom always calls me up because my day, my saint, my, the, my day of the, you know, is uh, January 6th. Mm -hmm. So she always, uh, you know, that was a, the Three Kings Day. Yep. yep. In Puerto Rico, we celebrate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So what happens if we had to celebrate growing up, we celebrated Christmas all the way to the Three Kings Day because that was my, mm -hmm. my day, right? So yeah. 
and my mom still calls me up and uh you know sings her little spanish song to me <laughs> that's so cute i love it the dia today, you know you know you're tu santo so uh that's always stuck with me i never liked my name growing up uh, people call me baltimore baltimore meal and then when i became an adult and it became a radio thing right it was like oh i got the last laugh on that so yes <laughs> just like joseph right i love that okay so here's a bonus question. I need to know this, right? I want to know. I want to know what your thoughts are because I'm I'm not sure how I really feel about it. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I love Tom Brady, but I love the Patriots. You know, I'm from the, I'm born in Boston. Like I say, I'm a Bostonian by blood, uh, Bostonian by heart, Floridian by blood. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm, that will never leave me. So I'm always a Patriots fan. And the thing is, I, especially here in Florida, they make it so difficult. Like I'll have the Patriots jersey and they'll be like, oh, walk into the gas station one time. Oh, your team is going to lose. How could you even see my jersey right now? It's halfway zipped up. So I want to know, because I see the Patriots in the back, and I love it. I really want to know, what do you think about Tom Brady's transition from the Patriots to the Buccaneers, especially now? Because it's funny that you guys have mentioned, like, your haters just becoming your fans. I made a post the other day, and I said, it's funny how your biggest haters can become your biggest fans with the right opportunity. You know what I'm saying? There's so many people who hate hated Tom Brady, but now he's on the Bucks. Let's be honest. I feel like he wouldn't, they would not be in the Super Bowl without Brady. That's just my personal opinion. Right. But I want to know how you feel about this transition. Yeah. How do you feel about this transition? You know, I, uh, I'm addicted to sports radio and uh, I would catch the last couple of years that he was here and how unhappy he was and just his overall demeanor especially that last year he was kind of like negative yeah and then it kind of boiled over to him leaving and uh you know we we, we went through the whole ugly breakup we're like fine be like that you know and um deep down inside i knew that even though i had like bad feelings for him i always loved him i made my kid after him so uh i went to the stage of a oh, good he's doing bad he had a bad game that'll teach him a lesson you know he needs <laughs> He needs Bill, you know, obviously he, he, he thought he could do everything by himself, but he needs Bill. And then, you know, slowly but surely, uh, you know, you rekindle those feelings when you see him like, you know, kill a team and go, wow, he did that for us. And you become a fan of, of things that he's ultimately, uh, some of us were Patriot fans because of him and the way he portrayed himself right in the, um, early 2000s up until you know three two or three years ago so all that stuff comes back to you and you have so much goodwill built up that the little negativity i went through for two or three weeks to get with him over overrides that and now i'm back on the tom brady list hopefully he wins you know it's if he wins or loses it doesn't affect the patriots the patriots are who they are and bill belichick's the way he is you know and who knows maybe he's the one that's wrong by treating people the way he treats people and built and we all like appreciation. So you could see why Tom, you know, had his, um, you know, uh, he, he needed to move. Plus he had a family too. I'm, I'm sure that Giselle and his kids probably didn't like the weather here and other negative things that they didn't like, you know, and, yeah. you know, uh, I wish him well, I want him to win because I hate Kansas city. <laughs> Man. We can't let why is, why is Kansas City talking about dynasty talk? You only won one Super Bowl. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Man, this is... But it's going to be a tough game. I think they're going to be... Uh, right now, I think they're the underdog, and I think they, they're they they're not the best team. I think Kansas City's hands down the most talented team, but we've seen that before, and Tom Brady goes in there and lights you up. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're hoping for, right? 328 i always remember that 328 is a huge lesson for me just remember those those numbers you come back in the last quarter you make it happen the last you know last half so i love that yeah mm -hmm. so that yeah. when you feel like you don't got nothing left you just gotta push through keep pushing yeah that was a miracle that was great though and uh the four people in atlanta that was the best thing to watch on on youtube <laughs> they were all like a halftime sky high Mm -hmm. They're laughing and we're like, I, was, I remember being at, at the Super Bowl party and we all had a rotate. This is not working. We're going to change the mojo. Everybody go in the kitchen. You know, people are like watching TVs in different rooms. We got to switch around our seats just to get the, the good, good luck going again. And 
Next thing you know, we score. Next thing you know, yeah. it's a, you know, a high tower forces a fumble. And, and, oh, my God, we're within five points now or whatever it was. And uh, it was oh, the most yeah. exciting game ever, right? So. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I remember because I, I my ex boyfriend, he's a born Floridian, I'm a born Bostonian. I have my jersey on. It was halftime. I said, "Forget this. I'm going to get my jersey. I'll be back. I'm coming back." We're going. Yeah. <laughs> it was a war in the house. Yeah, you house. know, there's always that little thing we do, that little ritual. If we're not doing it, we feel like we're throwing the team off, you know. And, and we have to do, we have to do what we do to get the mojo going. Oh my gosh, man, this has been a true, true pleasure, and um. You know, Baltus, I really thank you so much for taking your time out to speak with us today, man. Like, it was a blessing, honestly, to be here with Zaji, you know, my sister in business, my sister in Christ, and, and to be here with you. Um, this is a true pleasure. I'm so excited for what's to come. Zaji, do you have any last comments or anything like that before we wrap up? Any last questions? Yeah, I just yeah. want to thank you so much for your time, Balthazar. I really, truly appreciate you just taking your time and giving us some wisdom, man. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to replay this, take some more notes. Yeah. I, like I said, I want to learn every single day of my life and you can't stop learning. So mm -hmm. I hope that, you know, this uh, starts a beautiful friendship between us and who knows where the road might take us. Only God knows because our plans are not, are not the truth. Yeah, I love you guys' energy and I love what you guys are doing to change the world. Keep up with the charity and keep up your positive attitude. And uh, I'll be back, you know, whenever you need me to do a show. <laughs> And yes. if, if you're up here doing charity work, let me know. I want to be part of it. Yes, definitely. Uh, absolutely. It's definitely. What about you guys? Who was the last part you said? I didn't hear you. I just said I'll spread the word about your show and you guys uh, as much as I can. Absolutely. We truly appreciate yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, guys. You all have a great night. This has been Night I'll Talk with night Angel and Z and our guest. Hope the oh, in we'll the house. Next week at Thanks, 10. Guys. So excited. Have a great night, guys. Take Have a great care. night. Have a